So you were telling me there's another manga that has made Chainsaw Man Part 2 possible. I don't believe it. Another story that has helped Fujimoto craft this very different piece of literature than his original. I can't take that. That's not true. Something that has allowed Fujimoto the freedom to flex his artistic prowess and grow down so many different paths that he's never experienced before. Please, fill me in. Tell me what it is. This beautiful, well-constructed story would be a manga known as Look Back. And because of this, the video is sponsored by Viz. On September 20th, Look Back's physical volume will be releasing for the first time in English. Now these will definitely sell quick, so make sure you go into the description to support me, Viz, the manga industry. Make sure to pre-order Look Back's physical volume, go add it to your collection because it is a must-have piece of work by Fujimoto himself. Something new, unique, different that will break your heart in every way you can imagine. Make sure to click on the link within the description, go buy it, pre-order it, indulge within it, you will not regret it. For a lot of people, Fujimoto's history or his journey throughout the manga industry has been pretty interesting. Uh, it's been filled with a lot of one-shots prior to Fire Punch, which would be his first serialization. Uh, and since then, he would go to dominate with Chainsaw Man, respectfully. And while this is growing and evolving and becoming its own Goliath in every single aspect, uh, especially now with Chainsaw Man Part 2, the break between there led to some very interesting developments and some ways that Fujimoto himself as an author has explored how to write and to experiment and to really finalize his own authenticity and identity within his works. Look Back would be the very first story that would come after Chainsaw Man, a short story one shot that is 200 plus pages and filled to the brim with so much emotion, intensity and identity. It is introspective, it is a personal telling of Fujimoto's experience with the artistic process throughout his entire life, but it's split between two different people, Fujino and Kiyomoto, and quite clearly if you combine their names together, Fujimoto. This story has helped Fujimoto craft his future works and directly, in my opinion, Chainsaw Man Part 2 because it is so incredibly sensitive. It takes very small, meticulous steps to really build these characters and their emotions in a methodical way to make them alluring and endearing but understandable. And I think a lot of people within the art industry or even just going down their own creative process in whatever way they see fit will experience and relate to a lot of things happening within this story. It hurts. It's painful. It's pulling out all of the weaknesses and the flaws of Fujimoto himself and the things that he has gone through, how he's questioned his own artistic journey, whether he does or doesn't want to do manga at all, and the things that he has sacrificed to do it. Because it's split between two people, you kind of get a healthier balance and one provides a positive and the other provides a negative, but ultimately throughout the story, you see that twist and fulfill itself in different ways. So that positive may now be a negative and that prior negative may now be a positive. The thing is, however, it's never that black and white. And Fujimoto paints this in a way where even though it is separated between two different characters, there's nuance there. There's an understanding. There's a relatability to these characters and it's completely entirely complex. It's never that simple. Life is never that simple. And when it comes to the artistic process that surrounds your life, so many things can influence it. So many things can change it. Something is small as a simple compliment. A fan indulging within your work can uplift and spark your creativity so tenfold. A genuine compliment. But then something as simple as a comparison to someone else's work. Someone saying that your work seems mediocre or pretty average when put next to someone else that may be better can effortlessly distract you. Can rip you down off that high horse and burn you out. Could even stunt you and stop you from doing or pursuing what you love. This is shown very very intensively within Look Back. And I think it's very valuable that as introspective as his work is, playing into Fujimoto's prior experiences and maybe how he felt, it has done wonders to fill out the range of his stories tenfold. To put it in its simplest terms, it is a emotional roller coaster filled with so much beauty and heartbreak and tragedy, but relatability. It's sensitive within its topics in a way that you don't really see all too often. It's sincere and so sincere, in fact, that you might even see yourself reflected with 
interact in specific characters at specific times within their life. Mind you, you're watching a good portion of their early life being channeled and tunneled into manga creation. But how they both got there is entirely different. Their circumstances, who they are as individuals, their personalities are complete opposite. One's very outgoing and popular and lovable in a lot of different ways. And the other is reclusive, someone that sits at home, someone that is very scared of the world and people and doesn't feel comfortable doing anything. Yet they both find comfort and peace within manga, within drawing, within the artistry. But they also both find comfort within each other's artwork and each other's manga, one more so than the other. But when an understanding comes into place, it blooms. Their relationship thrives. They conjoin and meld together to create a almost singular individual that share the same passion and they want to better themselves. They want to continue to grow and thrive in a lot of different aspects that are completely new to themselves, but they love it because they're together. At some point, there is things that rip that away, things that impede your vision, that impede your creativity. And on the surface, you can kind of just take it all as a metaphor, that at some point you will experience something that will challenge your artistry, your commitment to it, your love and appreciation for it. And it can rattle you to your core. It can change how you perceive your art. It can change how you feel towards it and it can end it entirely, but it can also uplift it. It can enlighten you. It can put a fire inside of your heart to continue forward because that is what that other person might have wanted. This type of sensitivity and emotion and just beautiful suffocating atmosphere that's so horrifying but melancholic at the same time is something that Fujimoto hasn't really played around with before. There has been partial plays for it within stories like Fire Punch and even Chainsaw Man, but it's never been the primary focus. Up until Look Back, Fujimoto was known for being this chaotic storyteller that weaved very simple-minded individuals with chaotic but deep-rooted and nuanced themes and concepts. They clashed beautifully with action that was so over the top and out of this world. So to get something that is so grounded, so understanding, so fulfilling, so personal, it's a complete twist and deviation away from his style, but he nailed it. He perfected it. Something that he's never done before, but just taking different aspects and parts of his life and his experience with manga creation and putting his heart and soul onto that page. You get a story like Look Back and one that I don't think could be easily replicated by just any author. I don't think a story like Look Back could be produced by someone that personally hasn't experienced those things that he has been able to express so personally, so intimately. A story that has been globally praised and appreciated by some of the best and most loved and respected manga authors of this generation. Ino Asano is someone that you don't get praise from often, someone that is considered a prodigy within Japan as a writer, as an author, as a manga leading prospect, the author of Pun Pun. Yet he had so much love, appreciation and praise for Look Back and Fujimoto's work. You don't see this often. You don't see the world collectively fall in love with a singular story that's only 200 pages from an author that is so incredibly young, still gaining traction and popularity through a different work with a different story, and yet everyone fell in love. Everything changed, and he has utilized everything that he has learned from Look Back, where it started, the difficulty of writing a story like that has been channeled so perfectly into Chainsaw Man Part 2. What you are seeing currently within that manga, with Asa and Yoru, with even the return of Denji and the conversation with Yoshida recently, has all been built and understood within Look Back. You get a phenomenal character portrayal of Asa because it was pre-conceptualized within Look Back. They're very similar. A lot of that architecture and conceptual work has been bridged over very beautifully and effortlessly to Chainsaw Man Part 2, so much so that you barely even can notice it. And that's because Fujimoto has absorbed absorbed this style of writing, has mastered it, has perfected the craft, but still continues to learn and push himself to understand new things. Look Back is only the beginning, yet is the one that has so much heart and soul and intensity behind it that rattled the world to its core, that completely changed how people perceived Fujimoto's works, his writing, his style, his authenticity and identity. It's important, it's valuable, it's endlessly impressive, and something that you can easily 
and effortlessly continue to fall in love with. The reason you enjoy Chainsaw Man Part 2 right now is because of Look Back. The reason it feels so different, the reason it's paced the way it is, the reason these characters are so incredibly well thought out is because of Look Back and that start to explore different characters within different lights. For me, it is his perfected magnum opus, something so heartbreaking but relatable, something so sincere but sensitive, something that will latch onto you if you let it and stick with you for the rest of your life. You will remember this short story and can easily be crowned as one of the best reading experiences from all of Fujimoto's catalog. A true masterpiece, a true slice into his life. Please do yourself a favor, it supports me as well. Click on the link within the description and go buy the physical volume of Look Back releasing September 20th by Tatsuki Fujimoto. You definitely won't regret it.